Dr. Lewis Baldwin. The topic is Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, Dr. Baldwin, before we uh, uh, end this show for today, I think it would be impossible to uh, talk about anything without talking about the uh, recent hearings mm -hmm. uh, in Memphis dealing with uh, Dr. King's assassination. Let's use the last five and a half minutes that we have here mm -hmm. to uh, give you an opportunity to talk from uh, the point of view of your scholarship mm -hmm. about Dr. King's assassination and uh, perhaps during the last part to uh, say something uh, about the uh, recent hearings. But, mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about his assassination. Yes. Uh, since the assassination in 1968, there have been a lot of nagging, painful questions about who was involved. Uh, some have raised questions about whether or not the lone assassin's theory uh, should be acceptable. Others have argued no, that uh, we should think in terms of the conspiracy theory. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about that. We know that in the mid-1970s, a Gallup poll was taken, and the poll indicated that uh, less than one in five, every five Americans uh, thought of the assassination as uh, a tragedy that, uh, that was caused by one person. Uh, in fact, uh, to put it another way, um, most Americans believed in the conspiracy theory that Dr. King's death was the product of a conspiracy that might have involved some governmental forces. Governmental forces. Uh, so since that time, we've had a lot of talk about uh, exactly what happened, questions about exactly what happened. And uh, finally, we're getting uh, uh, some uh, publicity about, about that. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, the King family, my, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s family, uh, did not get involved. Uh, after James Earl Ray uh, uh, admitted that he had uh, acted alone in the assassination, uh, after he had confessed, uh, well, I think the nation sort of settled down. And, 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 and many people said, well, the case is ended. But in recent weeks, uh, the King family has sort of uh, uh, moved out of the silence and, and are beginning to, uh, is beginning to appeal for, for a new trial for James Earl Ray. And this is what we are seeing now. We don't know where it will lead, uh, but we are hopeful that, uh, that, a, that a trial will occur uh, because he was, uh, of course, as you know, sentenced to 99 years in prison without a trial after his confession. Mm -hmm. And so he never really had a trial as, really had as, a, as, as such, yes. that is, to be judged by his peers. And yes, yes. Uh, now, uh, uh, the King family, I mean, w when you look at that uh, uh, whole effort to uh, uh, bring about a hearing, mm -hmm. uh, is there any indication that Mr. Ray has any additional information, uh, a trial, is there that he has any additional information that he's not already uh, delivered mm -hmm. to us? There's no indication at this point. I was reading a couple of articles this morning. I'm sure you read them, one by Frank Ritter and one by uh, Carl Rowan, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with the, um, the hearings that were held on last Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Ritter, I think, is right in saying that, uh, that we aren't really going to learn anything new, mm -hmm. that we'll simply learn from James Earl Ray uh, that he's innocent, and of course he will state that he's innocent, mm -hmm. uh, that we need to perhaps pursue a person by the name of Raoul. Mm -hmm. We need to perhaps pursue the possibility uh, of a conspiracy mm -hmm. uh, in the death of Dr. King. So I don't think we will learn anything new, but I do think mm -hmm. that we should promote this idea of a trial for James Earl Ray because he never had a trial. And I think a trial could, uh, uh, could exonerate him, could vindicate him. Uh, it could show that, uh, that the death of Dr. King did result from a conspiracy. Uh, I think there are some things that we could perhaps learn, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think we'll learn anything new, mm -hmm. because I don't think uh, James Earl Ray is prepared to share anything mm -hmm. new. Now, when, when, when you look at uh, the, uh, Dr. King, I think you've already indicated uh, how the influence that he had in uh, South Africa and the whole movement toward uh, freedom in South Africa. When you look at Dr. King and his legacy, and you've written quite a bit about that, what can you tell our audience as uh, a departing, as departing statements in terms of the legacy of Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King? Well, I, I think we need to understand that, that his legacy centered around this whole quest for what he called the beloved community. That 
meaning, of course, a, a completely integrated society, a completely integrated world uh, in which uh, one experiences uh, intergroup, interpersonal living, mm -hmm. mutual acceptance, sharing of power. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is central to his legacy. And even as we respect Dr. King's legacy, we must recognize that, that he was simply one figure mm -hmm. in this total drama of the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, and scholars are now beginning to move beyond a focus on do, uh, major public mm -hmm. figures like Dr. King and Malcolm X mm -hmm. and others to look at people like E.D. Nixon and Fannie Lou Hamer and, and Rosa Parks and Septima Clark and others. Uh, I think we need to respect his legacy even as we understand the fact that he was part of a broader movement, mm -hmm. you see. So I think the central part of his legacy involves mm -hmm. this concept of community. Very good. And Dr. Ball, let me thank you during these last 25 uh, seconds that we have for coming by and giving us that excellent information about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And I think as we've already indicated, I don't think that we could have found a, a better guest to talk about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King throughout this nation than uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin. And we're certainly delighted that you took the time to come by and give us that information today. And let me encourage you to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.